If you are an absolute brand new green beginner with the Vectric design software for your CNC router project designs, including VCarve, Aspire, or Cut 2D, then by the time you're done with this video, you will not only understand the layout of the Vectric design software and how it works, but you will also be able to design a very basic CNC router project. That's a promise. IDCwoodcraft.com. I would like to welcome you as a brand new CNC router creator to the most comprehensive beginner's tutorial when it comes to the Vectric software that you will find on YouTube. By the time you're done with this video, I promise you will be able to design a basic project for your CNC router. I'm Garrett Frommy, CEO of IDC Woodcraft. IDC Woodcraft is a CNC router bit supply company for you and your CNC router to carve out those amazing CNC router projects that you will be designing by the time you're done with this video. I've created this video for you as a brand new beginner to help you understand how the Vectric software works. We are going to dive into the Vectric software and I am going to show you what it's all about and teach you all the basic tools that you are going to need to know to design a project. I promise by the time we're done, you will be going, I can design a project. And that's a very cool feeling. Now we're gonna be spending about an hour and 45 minutes together. But the other promise is you will not have to bounce to multiple YouTube videos trying to figure this stuff out. This video will get you where you wanna to get to. So we have to explain a couple things about the Vectric software before we actually dive into it so that you understand some aspects about the Vectric software. And the first thing is, is if you're using the free version versus the paid version. Now, Cut2D, VCarve, and Aspire all have free versions that you can download to practice with. It is practice software. You can do all the design things that I'm gonna be showing you in the free trials. But what the free trial cannot and will not do for you is generate the code that tells your CNC router how to carve out that amazing CNC router project that you are gonna be designing by the time we're done. If you wanna have that capability, you have to purchase the software. Free trial is a free trial. It's there for you to experiment with. Now, we're gonna talk about the differences between Cut2D, VCarve, and Aspire. So you know the differences, and then I'm gonna tell you the one that I recommend that you should get, and then we are going to dive into the software. So there are three versions, Cut2D, there's the Vectric uh, VCarve, and then there's the Aspire. There's also a desktop version and a pro version. So let's talk about the desktop versus pro first. Desktop will only allow you to design up to 24 inches by 24 inches on a project. So what that means for you as a CNC router owner, if you have a CNC router that has a cutting area that is 24 inches by 24 inches or less, then you want the desktop versions of the software. So if your CNC router has a larger carving area than 24 inches by 24 inches, you absolutely want to get the pro versions. That would be Cut2D Pro, VCarve Pro, or Aspire. Now, what's the difference between the three? So Cut2D is what we would call a two-dimensional uh, capability design. So we have this little stacked text sign here. And stacked text has multiple layers. It's got the top layer and it says, I love CNC. So the top layer is the top of the material. The second layer is the bottom of the letters, the top letters, and the start of the second letters, C and C. And then the third layer is the bottom of the project altogether. So that's a two-dimensional layer carving. This type of project, stacked text project, which I have a video on this channel that'll teach you how to do that, Cut2D will do that. Now, VCarve has another capability that is, uh, gives you a lot more flexibility. And that is it allows you to carve in letters that have different... Uh, thicknesses along the way. Now I'm finding a project here that that I have. Okay, this one will have to work. So I love my long mill. I have two CNC routers. I have the Phantom CNC router and I have a long mill. But we have used V-bits to carve 
in these letters in these kind of cool ways with interesting fonts. Now, sometimes the fonts will get thick and then narrow like that font Times New Roman. The Cut 2D will not give you that V carving capability, but the V carving will allow you to do that. I've got another project here. We've got this Jeep thing. Don't follow me. You won't make it. And these are V carved letters in. So it's using a V bit, which you'll learn about later on. You can't do that with Cut 2D. So Cut 2D is actually limited software when it comes to some of the cool things that you can do. The V carving, like I said, allows you to do the V carving and it gives you an incredible amount of flexibility. Here is another example of V carving. We've got this lion here that uh, has this mane and they go wide and narrow all along there. You cannot do this on Cut 2D. You can only do this on the V carve. Now, the Aspire is an entirely different level. If you are not computer savvy or have not had 3D modeling experience, I suggest you stay away from the Aspire version for now. You can always upgrade from Cut 2D to VCarve to Aspire. Cut 2D will allow you to carve those things, but you cannot import 3D models into it. On the other hand, VCarve will allow you to import 3D models. So we have something like this cool book here. This is what they call a 3D model or an STL model or STL file. This model can be imported into the Vectric software and you uh, and the VCarve and you can carve out 3D models in that software. What you cannot do in the VCarve is actually design your own 3D models. Meaning if this book didn't exist and I wanted to design it, I cannot do it in the VCarve software. I can import it into it, but I can't create it. The Aspire version is what allows you to create 3D models. The Cut 2D and the VCarve are both programs that you can design your amazing CNC Rider project in and you can create what we call toolpaths, which I'll explain to you a little bit later. Both of those, you can create toolpaths, generate the code to tell your CNC router what to do. The Aspire has all that, but on top of that, it has 3D model building capability. Now that is an entirely different knowledge level. So if you are, like I said, brand new to computers, uh, relatively new to them and not real computer savvy, just stay away from the Aspire. You can always upgrade though later. First, you need to know how to work with the VCarve. So again, I've got links down below for all these, but at the end of the day, my recommendation to you is get the VCarve Pro. It has features in it that the VCarve desktop does not have. So that's another perk why you want to get the Pro. Yes, we got to put out a little bit of money for it, but it is a very uh, well-established software and a lot of people use it. And that's all I teach on, on this channel. So those are the basics about the Vectric software. Free versions will not carve your, uh, or will not generate the code to carve your project. You can design all you want, but you have to buy it if you want to create the code to tell your CNC router to carve the CNC router project. The paid version will let you do that. And the Cut 2D, it's a limited capability uh, software. You can carve with it, but you can't do some of the things that you are going to want to be doing. VCarve is a software where it'll give you all the flexibility that you want. Aspire is a 3D modeling building program plus all the design features of VCarve. So that's the difference. One final note before we begin. I'm going to be teaching you this basic information in the Vectric VCar Pro version 11.5. What I'm going to show you will work in all the variations of Vectric, Cut 2D, VCarve, and Aspire, but it will also be good for version 12, 13, 14, 15, and on. Everything is going to be there that I'm going to be showing you, unless Vectric does a complete major layout change. So this video, if you have more than version 11.5, you are good to go with what I'm going to be showing you to get you started. All right, that took a little bit of time, but you needed to know this. So what we are going to do now, you and I, we're going to take a walk through this software. And 
Again, I promise you, by the time you're done, you'll have a basic understanding of the software and you will be able to design a basic project. Yes, it's a long video, but we've got to take the time to learn it. And you can't create anything on your CNC router without having this basic experience and knowledge that I'm going to teach you in this video. So without further ado, let's take a dive into the Vectric software and get you familiar with it so that you can start designing those amazing, amazing CNC router projects. IDCwoodcraft.com we are now on my computer and we are about to launch the Vectric software. I am going to be launching VCarve Pro version 11.5. What I'm going to be showing you will work for all the software variations that Vectric has, which includes Cut 2D Desktop, Cut 2D Pro, VCarve Desktop, VCarve Pro, and Aspire. This is all just basic familiarity, so you know how to start with basic designs. So if you look on my screen, to the upper right, there's a blue ring, that is my cursor, and I am now hovering over a, over a pretty cool looking blue icon. That is the Vectric VCarve icon. So if you have VCarve Desktop or VCarve Pro, this is the icon that you will see. Above that is the Aspire icon, this red flame. So we are now going to double click the VCarve Pro icon, the blue one. To launch the software and the software has opened up now one of the things you may want to do in the beginning is double check your your version updates if you look in the very upper right hand corner it says vcar pro 11.501 with my name after it but if we take a look at the upper right it has my name again that means i'm logged into the vectric software so it's it's talking to the Vectric company online. You don't have to be online to run the software, but next to that it says version 11.506 available. That means that there have been some patches that have been applied. And in order to update your software with those patches, which we're not gonna do now, you would come over to the help button in the upper left, select that and down towards the bottoms, you'll click check for updates and a window will pop up that uh, that says, okay, go ahead and check for updates. You'll click next and the, the software will look at the Vectric website and they'll say, oh, there is an update available. And then you want to click next to get it installed. But we're not going to do that. So I'm just going to cancel out of that. You can do that on your own and run that update. Your software should still run okay, but you always want to get those updates. When it comes to updating the software, Vectric does not have automatic updates like many other software packages do. So it is your responsibility to make sure it's updated. The software will still run, but there are just little fixes that need to be updated. You may run into a problem. If it's not, you may not run into a problem. But every once in a while, every month or so, you want to check up in the right-hand corner, it'll say if there's a new update available. When you see that, then you go through the update process. Check on that every uh, couple of months or so by doing the help button because it does not do an auto update. Okay, let's talk about what we are looking at right now. What you are going to use most of the time are the first two groupings. And what I mean by that, you have the startup tasks, with three different icons, and then you have recently opened files. The things below it, I almost never use, so I'm not even gonna cover that. What you will use, as if you are brand new, is create a new file if you haven't done anything else, uh, if you've never created a file before. And then you can open a new file from a template. What that means is if you've created a file with some information in it already, you can load that in and that information will be there when you start. And finally, open an existing file. This is a file that you want to work on, uh, that you know you've worked on. You're going to work on it some more. Down below that, it says recently opened files. It's going to show the last four files that you have worked on. But we're going to create a new file. This is where you'll usually start to get your new project going. When you select that, the window will open up and look like this. You will have a big white space in the middle with gray around it. And on that white space, you'll see some axis lines just like that right there. And you'll see a red dot somewhere 
on this project and that red dot will usually be either on one of the corners or in the middle. We'll get to that red dot in just a moment. This is all called your design working area, the big gray space with the scale to the left and above. So first of all, what we are gonna do is set up our job. And what setting up the job means is you're basically gonna tell the software what the piece of wood, the size of it is, that you're gonna be working on. Now, just to be clear and reiterate what a job size is, when you're getting ready to work on a project, you have a piece of material, just like this, a piece of wood or acrylic or something. The job size is the actual size of this material. So I have a piece of oak here that is 10 inches wide by five and a half inches tall. That is the job size. And we are gonna set the dimensions of it. We're gonna tell if we're gonna be working on one side, two sides, or we're gonna be working on a rotary item. Since you're brand new, you just wanna start with a one-sided project and start with those basics. So to the left, you'll have a menu, and at the top, it says job setup. Just below it, it says job type, and you'll have three selections if you have the vCarve Pro version of the software. If you have vCarve Desktop, you will only have two. If you have cut 2D, I believe you will only have two as well. So the first one is single-sided. The second is double-sided, which would mean that you would flip over the project and work on the back side as well. And the third is rotary. The difference between a single-sided job, a double-sided job, and a rotary is, we'll take this stack text sign. I love CNC. I have a video on how to do stacked text, by the way. This is a single-sided job because there's nothing on the back. Now, if I was gonna do something on the back that was really related or relative to the front locations, where maybe I'd have to do some index holes so that I'd flip it over and I would carve something on the back side. We'll say a two-sided chess piece or something like that. That's a two-sided job. It's a little more advanced. And then there's a rotary. Rotary does things like this very interesting spindle that you see here where you have to have a fourth axis on your CNC router that rotates. Now that's clearly advanced for you right now. It's not something to worry about, but that's the difference between these three selections, single-sided, double-sided, and rotary. Since you are beginning, just getting familiar with the software, you always wanna be on single-sided. And then we go to the next area, which is job size. And that's where you put in the dimensions of your project, so we have the width, height, and the thickness. So we are just gonna make this 10 inches by 10 inches. And as we do this, if you watch the gray space with the white rectangle in the middle, as I put the numbers in, it will change. I'm gonna put a one in the height and you'll see that it just changed, but now I'll put a zero behind it, meaning 10. And now we have a 10 by 10 project. And then we'll set up our thickness. Most projects are three quarters of an inch, so we'll put in 0.75. Just below that, you wanna set up your units. If you're working in metrics, you will click millimeters. And if you want inches, you will click inches. Now, I suggest that you set up your units before you set up your project size. I am working in inches, so that's what we're gonna work with. Now we have the Z0 position. This is where your router bit is going to start on the Z level or the up and down, meaning there's a zero point that we need to work from on the up and down space. And we can tell the software whether we're going to start from the top of the project or from the bottom of the project or what would be your spoil board. Again, we will just re-clarify what I just said about your Z0 position. You have three axes that your CNC router runs. It runs your X, which is side to side relative to you. So when you're standing in front of the machine, X would be going that way. Y is going toward you and away from you. And Z is the axis going up and down. Now, when you're setting up your CNC router project, you have to set your zero points. So you have to set it to some corner on the project. So we'll just say this corner here. We first set the Z and we want to tell it whether the Z0 is going to be on the top of the project or on the bottom of the project. And there are different cases when you want to do one or the other. 
In this case, in this stacked text sign, this is done off the top of the project. We set the zero off the top corner, and then it does all the cutting down in that area here. But if we have to do a cutout, meaning say this is off of a bigger piece of material, then we may want to set our Z0 off the bottom of the project so that the router bit only cuts down to the bottom and not past it. We may mismeasure the thickness of the wood or something like that. There are lots of cases, but right now you just want to set it to the top of the project. That's always the starting point for you as a beginner. Now you notice this red bead right here. This is the visual that's telling you how we are currently set up. We have material surface, and that's where the bead is at. If we switch that to material machine bed, then you notice that the dot has moved down to the bottom. Since you're just getting used to the software, you want to always start off on the material surface until you want to understand when you want to use machine bed. The next is the X and Y datum, or if you're looking from the top of the project, where about that project is going to be what's called your zero point. So now you remember, in the gray space, I mentioned this little red dot here. That is our XY datum position or our XY zero point. And right now that red dot is right here. Now if we come over to XY datum position, you'll notice that there are one, two, three, four white dots and there's one in the middle and then there's a little checkbox. We are going to leave this checkbox unchecked. But I want you to notice that we can click on one, any one of these. These are called radio buttons. If we click on the middle, and then we take a look at the project now, now you notice that the red dot is in the middle. That means that's our zero point. That's where we're setting our X, Y, zero. But most of the time, we just we want to either start from the center or we want to start from what is referred to as the lower left corner down here. Default is typically lower left corner. So we are going to come back over to XY datum and click the lower left corner as well. And then the two bottom areas here, we have machine modeling resolution and material settings. We are simply going to ignore that for now. We don't need to change that. Click OK. And now our project is set up as far as our material size and thickness and where everything is starting from. Just to be sure you're very clear on what we did in this very important step, let's rehash. And we'll rehash on our long mill MK2 CNC router here. So what we did is we told the software we have a piece of material. This is our job. And we set up the job size. We told it that we had a piece of material that's 10 inches wide by 10 inches tall, and that is three quarters of an inch thick. We also told it that our start point is on the surface of the material rather than on the spoil board. And we said it is in the lower left corner. So the software is going to write all this, the code that's going to make the long mill MK2 run and carve out the project on this board relative to this corner on the top of the material right there. Everything will be carved in this project from this coordinate position. Now, before we go into this some of the stuff, the basics of what you will be using just to get started. I just want you to notice that down at the lower left corner of the white rectangle, you'll see a line that going up along the upper edge, and you'll see a line left and right going along the lower edge. This is our XY datum position right there because we set that up. The white space in here is the actual project size that you told it we would be working on. So now we know we have this lower left corner as our XY zero position, and we have these little grayed out reference lines. But if we selected another position, those reference lines are going to be in a different position. I want to show you what I mean. We're going to go back into the job setup screen which I will cover in a minute. We're just going to change our XY datum position from the lower left corner to the center of the project. Now, when I click that, you're going to see the red dot move to the center. And there it is. And we have the crosshairs right there. When I select OK, the red dot goes away, as it always does. And now we have these grayed out lines in the middle of the project. So this line is your X reference line. This is your Y reference line. And this area now is our X, Y, zero datum position. 
I'm going to switch that back real quick to the lower left corner. Select OK. And one of the things I just want to make note for you is that traditionally, there are two locations that you'll set your zero point off of. It'll either be the lower left corner right here or the center of the project right there. Congratulations. You now know how to do the most important thing that you have to do when you're starting out creating your awesome CNC router project that you're going to be making. And that is setting up the job. The job being the raw piece of material and where your zero points on that project are going to be at. So now that you've done that, a new screen is going to pop up, at least the left menu. You're going to go into the design elements of the Vectric software. That's where you actually start drawing out that very cool CNC router project that you're going to be carving out later on. Before we get into the basics of the design aspect, we are going to talk about the real estate on the entire screen. There's a lot of things going on on the whole screen and I want you to understand what they are at a very basic level just so you know what they are and what they are for. Now, I'm not going to explain everything that would be overload, but just to get an idea of what the layout is and why it's laid out that way. So, let's get into that. If you found this video helpful so far just in how to set up a job and why you're setting up that job and the different aspects of setting up that job, then maybe you can take a moment, please, and hit the thumbs up button just below the video. That'll let me know that I am getting you on the right path. So let's get into talking about the real estate that you're looking at the whole screen of the Vectric software. First of all, you have this big gray area with a white rectangle in it. Above that, you have a scale and to the left you have a scale. This is your design area for whatever project you're going to be designing on. And like I said before, the white space is the project size that you have told the software you're going to be working with. This is 10 inches by 10 inches. You can design anything in any part of this window. We can design on the white space or in the gray space. The software doesn't care. This, uh, it, it will generate toolpaths anywhere you tell it to. We just want to keep our design inside the white space and everything will work fine. Now, above again, we have the scale and that scale is just referencing the size of the project. And this is the zero line right here to the left and we know it's 10 inches wide and we can see on the scale right here, it says 10 inches. And then same on the left of the project area. We have a scale and down at the bottom we have zero. That follows along the bottom of the project and when we go up we have 10 inches. That's the top of the project. That is our project height. Down at the lower right-ish there is an X and Y with a series of numbers after each one. Those are the coordinates that your mouse is currently traveling across. So if you watch those numbers, I'm going to move the mouse around the gray space and you see those numbers are changing. And that's because those are the coordinates. You notice that the X is positive, the Y is negative. And that's because we are on the positive side of the X zero point. So that being right at this point, this is the positive side of X and up is the positive side of Y minus is a negative side of Y. So Y direction is going back and forth. X direction is side to side. For you as the designer, this is considered the front of your project. So everything will be designed uh, with the X side to side as the reference motion of your machine. Now, quickly, I'm just going to throw this little insert in when it comes to the motion of the CNC router. All CNC routers move in three dimensions of space, side to side, back and forth, and up and down. So up and down is always considered the Z travel. Side to side, relative to from where you're standing, in some machines can either be X or can be Y. It depends on how the machine was built. Now, you look at this machine right here. This is a Phantom 4x4 CNC router. It's a machine that I absolutely recommend if you are looking to get into a pro-level machine. I've got other videos on the Phantom CNC router if you want to watch a review on that. But with the Phantom, so my X travel, well, first of all, my Z travel is up and down. And it says it right here 
on the Phantom, there's a Z plus is up, minus is down. They have also indicated the X travel and the Y travel. So X is plus that way, left and right. Plus is to the right and minus is left. And then the Y, which is labeled right there, is when the gantry moves back and forth. Now this whole thing is called the gantry. This is effectively called the carriage, the Z carriage. Same way it goes on the long mill, which is a bench top machine. That's the other machine that I recommend because it is really economical and is a, a, a really rigid machine. For the price, you can't go wrong. I've got a nice deep dive review video on the long mill. That I will link that down below as well as the phantom machine. But on the long mill, we have the same thing. The Z goes up and down. The Y travel is back and forth. It's minus when it's coming towards us. It's positive when it's going away from us. And the X travel is side to side. Positive going to the right, negative going to the left. Some machine makers will actually do this sometimes kind of backwards where the Y travel is side to side and the X travel is forward and backward. And that can be confusing when you're designing your CNC router project in your vector software. The thing is, is you always want to design it relative to the software. And then when you're done designing it, then you can worry about the orientation of your machine. But I just want you to understand that some CNC routers have that orientation shifted for some reason, and it can be confusing to new CNC router owners. So that's just an important aspect to think about that might cause a little confusion when you go to put your project on your CNC router, and it seems to be cutting the project sideways. That's why, the way that they design the machine. When it comes to the Vectric software, always design it from the x-axis uh, as if it's done upright in the software. And if you need to rotate it to, to work with your machine, you'll figure that one out later. Right now, we're really going over the Vectric software. But this was a really important point because I see it creates a lot of confusion sometimes for the machines that have the orientation that are shifted 90 degrees. I don't know why they do it, but they do it. That's why I recommend like things like the Phantom and the Long Mill because they orient it in a way that makes sense to us relative to our design software. Okay, let's get back into the talking about the real estate of the Vectric software. The rest of the real estate, we're going to start in the upper left corner. At the very upper left corner, it tells you what your software is. In this case, ViewCard Pro version 11.501 with my name, the registered name, and it says new. New is saying that this is a new project that has not been saved yet. Since we have a new project and it's not been saved yet, we will want to make sure that we save the project and do it quite often. We'll come back to this in just a moment. Just below that are your traditional uh, tabs that you find in software. First one being file, next one being edit, and then we have ones that are specific to Vectric, that being model, machine, tool paths, then you'll have view, which is pretty typical. In this case, you'll see gadgets if you have the pros versions of the Vectric software. And then of course the help uh, menu. If you click that, you'll have items in any one of these. Just below that, on the upper left, it says drawing. And then along the side, there will be several tabs. We always want to make sure we are simply working on the drawing tab. If any of the other tabs are highlighted, then you don't see file operations. That means you are not on the drawing tab. You'll need to come up and select drawing. So if I switch to modeling, it says modeling up here. We want it to be on drawing and there's drawing. That's what we want. You have a couple other icons right next to drawing. We'll get back to that in a moment. Then there will be two tabs, 2D view and 3D view. When you're starting off and designing a project, you're always working in 2D view. The 3D view is when you are generating what they call tool paths. Tool paths is, is how the router bit is actually going to be traveling around the project. I just use the term tool path. And that is a term that just needs a little bit of clarification and you'll use it all the time. So we're going to use this very cool carving, V carving of a lion here. The router bit needs to travel 
all along the various elements of this lion, like in the mane here, and it makes these little swirlies for the mane and the outline of the face. So the router bit has to travel along these areas in order to carve the project. Those paths that the router bit goes on is called a tool path. So for example, this is a V carving, and this is done with the ultra clean cutting 90 degree V bit. This outline of the face is the tool path. So the router bit actually followed along this path right there. So anywhere that the router bit is moving is called a tool path, even for the rapid. So if we had set the zero point down at the corner here and the router bit needs to come over to this point quickly, that's called a rapid. And then it does its normal feed rates, which we'll talk about later on. So that's a tool path. That's a rapid tool path from this corner to here. And then that's a carving tool path around the face and everything in the main. That's what tool path is when we're talking about that. We'll get into creating those tool paths later in this video. You've been around here for a while now. I guess we're about a half an hour into the video and we still have a ways to go. But I hope again that you are getting something out of this video and if you are please just hit the thumbs up button down below if this video is helping you make sense of the Vectric software at basic levels. I mean there's a lot of stuff to learn in the software that I'm not going to cover here. It takes a little bit of time but at least you're getting the basics. Let's keep on going. Hit the thumbs up button if this is helping you. So you want to make sure that 2D view is selected. I'm going to select 3D view quickly just so you see what it looks like. And when I click on 3D view, our working space changes and there's a purplish color, maybe different for you. And then there is a faded out piece of wood. That would not be faded out if we had some design work on here and had generated some tool path. But that's what it looks like. And if you see this, you need to switch back to 2D view. So we're going to do that now. And now we have our project working area. Next to that, there will be a little window that when you hover over it, it turns blue and it says layer one. We are not going to mess with that, but that is where you use layers. I have a deep dive video that explains to you what layers are, but for now we're simply going to leave it on layer one. While you're hovered over that, however, if you click on that, a menu will open up and that will show you all the layers that you have in your design project. If you've accidentally clicked that, all you have to do is click off of that and generally up in the upper area of your screen you can click and that will close that little window. Now as we continue to the right we'll come to a series of 12 icons. For now we're not going to cover them with the exception of the first two. We have toolpath geometry snapping on and off and smart snapping on and off. We want to make sure that these two are turned on and you know they're turned on when they have a box around them. I'm going to click this first one, toggle geometry snapping on off, and I'm turning it off. And you notice when I clicked it, now that box is gone. That means it's turned off. We want to turn it back on. So we click it again and that turns it on and we are set to go. The rest of these icons, there's a few zoom icons. This is a panning icon. And then there's some other tools. Up in the upper right, it'll have your name. It'll either say sign in or it'll have your name or the name that you registered the software under. If it's showing that name, then that means you are signed into Vectric at their, at their server. And then it says if there's a version available, then you got some little things next to that. I would never click these three buttons. Just below that, there's a tab that says tool paths. If you hover over that tab, a slide out will come where you can set up the tool paths, but we don't use this tab. We are going to get this tool path slide out to come out a different way. So if you accidentally hover over it, that's okay. If you click on it by any chance and it stays out like it is right now, we don't want it. You simply come up and click this little blue arrow right there. We are going to get rid of it. Click that and that will turn it off. Excellent. Now you understand the layout of the Vectric software after you have set up your job. 
What we're gonna do now is we are going to go over the design tools. On the left side, there's that menu that has all the icons, and at this point, you're looking at them going, what do I do with these different things? Well, first, I'm going to explain to you what each segment is, at least at a basic level, and then we're gonna get into some very basic design tools, just so you can get started to play around with the software so that you can figure out how to make a cool design that you're going to be making very shortly that you're going to be carving on your CNC router. Now, you may want to consider subscribing to this channel because this is how I take all the videos. I teach you from a beginner's level the Vectric software and also how to take that software over to tell the software how to do what they call tool paths or how the router bit's going to be running around that project while it's carving out that very cool design that you have done. And then I also have videos that tell you how to set up your CNC router. And of course, IDC Woodcraft is a CNC router bit supply company that supplies you with the CNC routers that's going to be carving those amazing projects. So I have to teach you about router bits as well. So I've got videos on this channel. You might want to go over to idcwoodcraft.com and check out what we have there. Now, one of the things I want to say is when it comes to CNC router bits, when I was in your shoes in the beginning a few years ago, I ran into a big problem that you will run into if you're not running into it already. And that is finding a good starter set of CNC router bits. Literally, I could not find someone that said, these are the bits that you need to get started that's going to do this, 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 and this. I ended up buying probably about $250 to $300 worth of CNC router bits that are still sitting in my toolbox because I didn't know what I was buying. And that's why I started IDC Woodcraft to supply people like you who are brand new with a good starter set that covers you across the board where you can do virtually 95% of the projects that you are thinking about and are coming up with designs. You'll get more router bits as you move along. What you're looking at here is that starter set. It's a complete starter set. It's got or some basic designs with instructions that walk you through the designs for you as a beginner. Kind of cool little projects. And there's a lot of other information like feeds and speeds. Feeds and speeds are how you set up the router bits. You may want to check that out. I'll put a link down below in the description. In fact, down below in the description of this video are lots of links and an ex explanation that you are going to want to read. It's kind of a breakdown of some of the stuff that you'll want to know. So what we're going to do now is we are going to get back into the Vectric software. I'm going to walk you through the design stuff. If you feel like this is helping you understand the foundations of the Vectric software at this point, I want to ask you to leave a comment down below and say, this is actually giving me some understanding, <laughs> right? You have probably bounced from YouTube to YouTube uh, video trying to figure this out. So here you got a video that is laying this out at a very basic level, explaining everything along the way. I hope you're getting something out of it. If you are, please comment down below. Let's get back to the Vectric software. We have seen the layout of the Vectric software in the design function or the design area where we're gonna do our 2D design work. To the left, it says drawing. And below that, you have quite a few icons. So let's explain what each grouping is. The first one is file operations. This is where you can start a new job, open up an existing job, save your project, and then you can import vectors. You can import a bitmap or an image. So the first thing we want to do is save this job. Whenever you're doing this, you want to save and you want to save on a regular basis. And the way you do that is simply press this. So you remember, I told you, it says new up here. This means that we do not have this project saved yet. So we'll come down and click the save the current file. When we click that, a directory will open and we select our area, our directory that we want to save it to. I'm simply going to go to downloads and I'm going to give it a name. So we come to file name and we'll call this beginners project and click save and now if you look up in the upper left corner just right here it says beginners project we now have saved a file you can call it anything you want if you're doing a welcome sign you're going to call it welcome sign 
The next row of icons are like management icons. This first one you will use on occasion. That's it to get you back to the job setup screen. I'm gonna click that real quick. And when you, we do that, we get this job setup screen where we said we were going to do a single sided job. We have our project size. We're starting at the material surface. We're doing this at the lower left corner and a couple other things. We don't need to change anything, but that's how you get back to that to change your job size. So I'm gonna cancel that. We're gonna come back up here and you have a cut feature, a copy feature, paste feature, undo and redo. So you can use these as you're working on your design. Below this is the big area. This is the thing you've been waiting for. This is the part of the software where the rubber meets the road. Create vectors. Now we want to be clear here what a vector is. A vector is any kind of line that you draw. Whether it's a circle, square, straight line, text, they're all considered a vector. So in the CNC world, vector is a term that you're going to use in here a lot. Just below that, you'll have five vectors. These are your basic types of shapes that you can draw. We have a circle, an oval, rectangle, a polygon, or any sided shape that you want, and a star. Below that, we have draw straight lines, draw arcs. Arcs are segments of a circle. So a quarter of a circle, or an eighth of a circle, a third of a circle, this is what this section is doing. Then we have draw curves. Curves are not arcs. They're not parts of circles. They are curves that vary. It's kind of like driving along a windy road. There's no consistent radius turning, anything like that. Now, next one is freehand drawing, and then we have texture. We are not going to touch some of these. We'll just get into the basics, just getting you familiar. When you want to draw text, you have draw text on the third line. Then you have draw text within a vector box. The next one is edit the spacing of your text. And then we have convert to curves, which we are not going to talk about. And then we have put text on a curve, which is a very, very cool feature. And below that is something we're not going to get into today. It's called trace bitmap. This is where you bring an image in and trace on your image. I've got quite a few videos for that as well on this channel. In fact, I will link a lot of my videos down below. And finally, we have add dimensions to your 2D drawing. So this section is all your create vectors. This is what you're going to use to draw with. The most important and most used. The term vectors is going to be a term that you are going to use all the time. Vector is any type of line on your design that you can actually tell the software you are going to carve into your CNC project. So whether it's a line or a square or a circle or text, anything that you can tell the software, I want a router bit to go along this line or through this line, what have you, that is considered a vector. And that's this section that I just showed you, you will use that the most. This is your creation area. Now, one of the things when it comes to vectors, there are other lines that you will use on occasion, construction lines or grid lines. Those are not considered vectors. Those are simply tools to give you a reference to put your vectors around. So I just want to make sure that's clear. Vectors is a term that you will use and any line we create in your design that the router can carve, that's considered a vector. Next is transform objects. This is where you're going to do some other work. You'll move an object. Um, you'll adjust the scaling of an object and there's some other features like mirror and contort text and centering projects. This align selected objects, we'll use this briefly. Below that is edit where we do some other features. For now, the only one we want to know about are the scissors right here. We'll get back to that. And finally, we have offset and layout, which we are not going to discuss today. We are just going to work on three things, circles, rectangles, and some text. So let's start with our basics. The first two lines are going to, the first two rows of icons are going to draw lines or shapes. The top one are what we call closed vectors. And let's just draw a circle real quick. I'm going to do that by clicking on that. And this menu opens up, says draw circle. We're going to ignore everything in here. We're going to come out to the 
drawing space and I'm going to hold the left mouse button down and I'm just going to move a little bit and you see it's created a circle and I'm going to come over and close that. Now I'm going to come back over to the create vectors area and I'm going to draw a line where it says draw line or polyline. I'll select that and another menu opens up. We're going to ignore that simply come over below the circle and I'm going to click my left mouse button once and then I'll click it again after I've moved the mouse a little bit and you see we have a line showing up. And now I'm going to hit the escape button to end draw a line and I'll hit escape button again. Now you see I have two vectors here. I've got a circle and I've got a line. The circle is considered a closed vector. And what that means is you could run your finger around that and never come to the end. That means it's closed. It's continuous no matter what you do. Now down below, you can run your finger along the line and you'll have a start point and an end point. That's considered an open vector. So these are just terminologies to remember. So we're gonna delete those. And I'll tell you how I did that in just a moment. So we're gonna come in and draw a circle because you'll wanna draw a circle. Let's do a rectangle because most designs start with a basic rectangle. So we're gonna select that and then we have some information here. The first thing I want you to choose is the middle button right here. And that's a center radio button, what they call a radio button and your rectangle is gonna be formed around the center. Then you wanna make sure that you are selected on square. There are three radio buttons. It says square, radius, and radius, internal, external. We want it on square. And down in the width, we're gonna say five. And for height, we'll say five. And then you'll come out into your design area anywhere you want. And we will simply click the left mouse button once and we have now created a five by five rectangle and we can click again and we will create another one and another one and another one and another one ad infinitum this is how you get a rectangle going now let's just say you accidentally click too many times like i did all you do is hit the control button down hold it down and press z and every time you press z it'll undo the last thing that you created so we've done it all the way to the first rectangle we did. Since we're in draw a rectangle, we want to get out of it. So we're going to come down and click close. And one of the things I want you to notice, a rectangle is also considered a closed vector. You can run your finger around it, add infinitum, and you will never come to an end. That means it's a closed vector. I needed to stop again for a very specific reason. One of the things I see very, very often with people who are getting into this design stuff, CNC routers, they're getting into it because they're retiring from work and they're thinking, what am I going to do now? You know, we kind of get out of the workforce, we lose our purpose, and we need something else that we can call ours. And CNC routing is one of those things where you can really fulfill yourself with a new purpose. You're being very creative and you can make uh, very amazing and personalized projects for other people. It's a great way for you to start leaving a legacy. I mean, I work with my grandkids all the time with the CNC router and designing, and also I make projects for them and for other people. It's very rewarding when you're doing either one of those things. So if you're really looking in the CNC router thing, and that's one of the reasons why you're looking at it, because you're trying to figure out what you're going to do in retirement, then you know, you have come to the right place and also you are stepping into a very big community. I even have a Facebook group that has 33,000 people in it at this point of people like you who have gotten into CNC router very proud and always showing off their projects and always helping each other. It's called CNC Entrepreneurs. You may want to sign up for that as well. Down below in the description, I'll have that. In fact, I am providing so much information for you that I have put together a PDF of what I've talked about uh, as far as some of the things you need and the things you need to consider about the Vectric software and some other things that you have to consider while you're getting into this. One of those things is many people aren't that familiar with computers that are getting into this. And so they're trying to figure out just how to work with a computer. And often I see 
people who are getting into this don't use this little contraption right here, a mouse. They just don't use them on computers, never got ha uh, in the habit of it, but I'm going to tell you this right now. This is a tool that you absolutely need with your design software, with a Vectric or any other design software if you get it. And the reason is, is the software is built for that. Now, you'll see me doing things in the computer, like I'll be zooming in and out, and I'll grab the thing, the, the, the project area, and I'm moving it back and forth really fast. Uh, the pointer is moving around the screen really fast. That's because I'm working with a mouse. If you are not a mouse user, I'm going to say right now, get a mouse. I suggest this one right here, Logitech. It's a very convenient, uh, or a good mouse. I use it a lot. I've been using it for a very long time. And you just use it. All you have to do is push and hold a button. Then you move the mouse around and your cursor moves. You move the project. You do all kinds of things. I'm going to put a link down below for this particular mouse too. And I will put it on that PDF. There's another tool that you will need in your CNC routing as well. And that is you need a pair of calipers. You need something to be able to measure like the thickness of your project or you need to make sure that the router bit you're using is the size that you want so you can measure it real quick. You will use these all the time. It's a very, very important tool to have. That's when you're doing your work. This is something you have to have for the design software. It's just built for that. So down below in the description, there is a link to get the PDF that's going to have the link for this and the link for the router bits that you are going to need to get started if you don't know what to get. I will link that to the starter bit set from IDC Woodcraft. I'll link this and I'll link some of the other stuff that I am going to suggest that you get as you're getting into CNC routers. Unfortunately, we have to get some other miscellaneous things as we move along the, uh, our journey into CNC router. It's just part of the process. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what we spend because it's so rewarding. You are going to be uh, really enjoying the CNC router journey. Yes, in the beginning, it's a little challenging. You're learning something new, but isn't that what life is about to have a new challenge, especially when we're stepping out of the workforce and we're kind of sitting there with our thumbs going like that. We've played video games maybe, watching movies, taking a walk and just going, there's got to be more in life. This is something that's going to change the game for you. And of course, subscribe because I am going to teach you everything you need to know on this in this channel. There's one other thing that I might want to suggest to you and I will put it on that PDF as well. What I'm showing you in this video is the basics of the Vectric software. There are a lot of tools and it's extremely powerful that uh, what you can do with the Vectric software, but I can't teach you all in this video. And what I would suggest is that you might consider a course that is put together by someone that I know. His name is Kyle Ely. He put together a course that runs you through the Vectric software from the very beginning. He explains it to you like I'm explaining it to you and he will explain all the tools and how they are used so you can create your designs very specifically and position things very specifically, get very specific arcs and curves and all kinds of cool stuff. And what Kyle does is he takes the, 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 the deer in the headlights look out and he helps you make a lot of sense out of this. I will connect uh, or put a link down below in the description for his course so you can at least go to his web page and take a look. I strongly, strongly suggest you consider that. That'll be on the PDF as well. So just real quick, I know I interrupted our, our little dialogue in the Vectric software, but I just thought, you know, I mean, this is something that's really, really important for you. You have to get a mouse. You just have to. Otherwise, you'll be working way, way too hard. Also, you want a pair of calipers, uh, the router bit starter set. You need to know what you need to start with. And if you really just want to get the education, here's my philosophy on, on maybe considering signing up for his course that walks you through the vector software, Cut 2D, the VCarve, and the Aspire. You've invested or are investing a lot of money into this amazing machine that you are getting to create amazing projects. You're going to be investing in CNC router bits. You're going to invest in the tools. You're going to buy yourself a mouse, and you should probably do that right now. I'll link it down below off of Amazon. 
Invest in your skill and ability to be able to do this the right way. What I've seen many times is people like me who jump the gun, let's just try to work it, and then we make lots of mistakes and we don't understand why those mistakes are happening. That's why I recommend this course because it'll help you avoid so many mistakes. I also, is why I recommend you subscribe to this channel because I walk you through all these processes. I don't just teach you the Vectric software, which I have many videos on. I also teach you how to work your CNC router, how the CNC router works, and of course, about CNC router bits and what their applications are. This is all knowledge that you're gonna to have to gain as you move along in your journey. And of course, sign up for the CNC Entrepreneurs Facebook group. And finally, make sure you go down to the description of this video and find that, that this line that says, get the PDF that has all the information I'm gonna share with you in this video. It'll lay it out very clearly for you so that you don't have to try to remember it or take notes. It'll be on that PDF. Okay, so thanks for listening to this. You've been around for quite a while. Maybe for you, I'm going a little slow, but there are people that it just takes a little bit of time. And so we need to make sure that they are understanding the foundations of what you're getting into, right? So um, for you, if I'm going at a great pace, again, give me a thumbs up, comment down below, say thank you for explaining this very clearly, slowly, so I can get it. All right, let's get back into the Vectric software and keep learning so that by the end of this video, you will have the ability to create a very basic project. IDCwoodcraft.com now we're going to draw a circle. So we'll come back under, create vectors, select the circle icon, and we want a five inch diameter circle. So first of all, we want to make sure we are on diameter. We have radius and diameter. We're going to select diameter. We're going to change that to five and we'll do the same thing right in the middle of the project. We'll just come over and click our left mouse button once and there is a five inch circle. And again, I can just and click in and click in and it'll keep making circles. Hold the control button down, press Z and you will undo each one. The control Z feature is something you will use all the time in the Vectric software. We're often making too many lines or want to remove something. So we hit control Z to undo. Now, sometimes you may undo too much. So here's another little keyboard tip for you. When you hold the control button down and press the Y key, then that will bring the last item you undid back into the image. So you can hold the control button down and keep pressing Y and you will bring all those circles back. So keyboard shortcut, holding the control button down and pressing Z will undo the last item you did. Holding the control button down and pressing Y will redo or bring back the thing you just removed. So now we have a rectangle and a circle. Now we're going to close that. And let's say we want to get this stuff on center of the project. Well, this is where we use a centering tool. So what we're going to do is I'm going to highlight the circle and we highlight that by clicking right on the circle. And when you click on it, we have selected it. You can see that the circle is now a purple dashed line. That means it is selected. That's what we can manipulate. The rectangle right now is not selected, so it will not be manipulated. Come over to the transform objects area. It'll be your last icon to the right. When you hover over it, it says align selected objects. Click that and a menu will open up. And we're just gonna look at the very top buttons. There will be three of them, and we wanna focus on the one in the center. What that's going to do when we click that, it will align the circle to the center of the project. So if you look at the circle, I'm going to click the middle one, and the circle has moved and is now in the center of the project. Well, now we've got the rectangle off center. We need to change that. So while we're here, we can simply click the rectangle. And you notice that the circle is deselected and the rectangle is selected. And we go back and press that center button again and the rectangle is now centered. So this is how you align your projects using the alignment tools. We're going to close that. And we now have a very basic project and you can click anywhere in the project or anywhere on the screen 
off of a vector and it will deselect what's selected. So right now the rectangle is selected. We'll just click with the left mouse button over in the white space anywhere and the rectangle will deselect. And that's a basic shape. If you want to do a star, you come over and select the star and you can simply start your star anywhere. Like if you want to do a flag and just hover out and drag out however you want to. And now we have some stars. I'm going to close that. And now we have done some basic things. It's kind of cool. But what if the stars are too close to the rectangle, which they are. It's almost touching right here. And it's almost touching right over here. So we want to move the stars up. The way you do that is by holding your left mouse button down. We're going to, we're going to move both of these stars. We're going to hold the left mouse button down over to the right of the stars. So now I'm holding my left mouse button down and I'm dragging across and you see this box is starting to form from where I clicked to my, to my mouse pointer. Now I got this box that's touching both stars. When I let go of the left mouse button, now I've selected both of the stars and I want to move them up. So the easy way to move them up is by using the up arrow buttons on your keyboard and are simply going to click it a couple times and now the stars are moved up. Excellent. We have now, and now I'll just click anywhere over here and the stars are now deselected. Here's another keyboard tip, uh, something you'll be using a lot of, and it's these arrow keys. On the keyboard, there's an up arrow, down arrow, left and right, right and left. When you have something selected and you use the arrow keys, any one of them, it's going to nudge that vector or vectors if you have multiple ones selected in the direction that you are pressing the arrow key. Now, if you are zoomed way into a vector where we can only see like a line in the star and you use the arrow keys, it's going to only nudge it just a little bit in the overall design. Whereas if you are zoomed way out and you see the whole project and you try to move an element in the design, it'll nudge it quite a bit. When are these arrow keys handy? Well, you'll find them pretty handy when you are doing text on a sign. Often the text, even though it's centered relative to the, the sign that you've created, the skew of the text or capital letters may actually make it look off center. So you will want to nudge that text left or right, up or down, whatever you need to do. So play with the arrow keys a little bit, select something and hit the four arrow keys, zoom in, hit them and then zoom way out and hit the arrow keys and you'll see how that works. But this star is not where we want it to be. We want it to be in the middle. You click the star by putting your mouse right on it. That'll select the star. So we'll go back to transform objects. The last icon, which looks like a target, a line selected objects comes up when you hover over it. Click that, click the upper middle button and the star will center itself up. We'll close that. And now we have done some basic stuff. Now I want to deselect the star. Another way you can do that is by hitting the escape button and that deselects it as well. Another keyboard shortcut that you will use a lot, and that's the escape button. Many of the vectric commands that you use, and when I say commands, draw a line, draw a circle, cut, lots of different things. When you're done with it, you use the mouse button, go over and hit the close button. Sometimes it's just easier to reach over and hit the escape button instead of moving your mouse and trying to find that little close button. So remember, escape is also another keyboard shortcut you will use a lot. And also I want to remind you again to make sure you download that PDF that I've got listed down below in the description. Let's get back to this. Let's put a little bit of text in the project. We will use for now the first text button that says draw text when you hover over it. So it's under create vectors, third row down, first icon says draw text. Select that and the text box will open up and there'll be some information down below. We want to make sure number one before you start is to have the center button checked. You can have left justify, center justify, or right justify, we are going to center justify. And the other thing we want to take into account is the size of the text. Right now, the letter height will be 1.8457 tall. That's pretty tall. So we're going to bring it down to 0.75, and that's how high the text will be. Now, you'll notice 
in the middle of the project, right now there's a box, a dotted box, and it has a little bead at the bottom of it in the middle of the box. So what we know now is that the text is center justified because that bead is on the center. As you watch the box, I'm gonna click left justify and that bead has shifted. If I click right justify, it has shifted again. We wanna be on center justified and the height of the box is indicating the height of the text. Now it's in this kind of weird spot where it's going to cross over the star. We can relocate this right now by clicking anywhere in the project. So if I click right here with my left mouse button, the text start point has started down there, or I can start it right up in the middle of the star. And that's okay. We're not worried about that right now because we'll be able to move it where we want to in just a little bit. So we're gonna type in some text. So we go into the text area and click. So the cursor is blinking and we will write CNC, enter, so start another line and then we'll type in project. And now if you take a look in the project, we have CNC project, it's in big letters, it's crossing over everything, it's kind of a weird font. So I'm going to change the font real quick. The way you change the font is simply come down to the middle where it has the font bar, select the little drop down arrow and select the font that you want. And we will pick Palato Palatino, Palatino. And by doing that, we have now changed the font, as you can see right here. Now our letters are too big. We need them smaller. In order to do that, we can simply grab the little beads that are around this. You can see there's little beads around the word. Now it's a little crowded here, so we're gonna move things over a little bit. I have moved this letter by grabbing this little center box right there. When we are highlighted like that, we have this box where we can now edit things. So I'll show you how to do that. Well, first we're gonna close the text. And I'm gonna click down below right here, and now nothing's selected. So we're gonna select the text. And by clicking on anywhere, anywhere on the text, we have selected it. And we click on it again, these little beads come up. And these are great handy tools that you will want to use and will use all the time. These are tools where you can move the project around, stretch it out, crunch it, and rotate it. And I'll show you what I mean. If you notice in the very middle, there is a little rectangle. And that little rectangle is a grab point. When you hover over it, the cursor changes shape to a target. Hold your left mouse button down and we can now drag the the text around. We can do the same thing with the star. Come over to the star, click it once, and then click it again, and those beads will come up, and we'll cover over the middle and move the star over or anywhere we want. I moved it to the wrong location. I want it back at the center, so what you do is hold the control button down and click Z once. That will undo your last move. I'm going to hit escape, now we'll deselect the star. We're going to go back to CNC project because we want this text to be a little bit smaller. So I click it once and click it again. And we're going to make it smaller by grabbing one of the little beads, the little white beads. There's a blue bead and a white bead. We want the white bead. When you select that white bead, hold your left mouse button down. You can make that text bigger by dragging out or make it smaller by dragging in. And when I let go, you can see now we have a different size text. Now I'm going to move it over to the white space. Now we have the corner beads. All four corner beads will do the same thing. They will stretch the entire text in scale, meaning the text will hold its this height and width scale. But if we grab one of these little beads on the left or the right and pull on it, now we're stretching out the text. I'm going to hit Control and Z and that will undo it. And now what do you think will happen if we do one of the up and down beads? So we've got this one right here and we have this one right here. And we have this one right here. If we grab one of those and you know you're grabbing it when you get this little crossed arrowed. And now we are stretching it up that way. So I'm going to Control Z. So that's how you can change the size of the text. Now we can just kind of get a general idea how it's going to sit inside this circle. So we're going to come back over and I'm going to grab that little rectangle in the middle, hold my left mouse button down and bring it up here. 
and you notice that it kind of popped right in the middle and there's that little dashed line going up and down that's part of the snap features that we had turned on earlier that would be these buttons right up here that's turned on and that's making it snap to the middle of the project so i like cnc project there but the star is crossing into it so i need to move the star up a little bit remember we move that we simply click on it once and it's selected and then we use our up or down or side to side arrows on our keyboard and we can move it to where we want we can also move it exact as we want to but that's getting a bit deeper into the software and not good for this particular video so now i'm going to so now i'm going to select cnc project by just staying over to the right and just hovering over let that little box that's being created touch any part of it let go and uh, now the whole thing is selected on the corners of the text you'll also notice blue buttons on the four corners when you grab those and hold with your mouse button and you pull down or pull up, you'll start to rotate the text. And you can do that with any item that you double click on to select. All those beads will come up and you can do everything I just explained. Now, we have been here for quite some time now. And I hope that at this point, you're starting to grasp what this uh, software is all about, the Vectric Design software. So you can make some really awesome CNC router projects. If you are getting something out of this, then again, I just would like you to, add, to ask you to give me a thumbs up and a comment down below. Thank you. You helped me out a ton or some suggestions or advice. Remember, this is top level stuff. There's still a lot of stuff that you will want to learn in the Vector software. And this is why I just recommend that you take that course I was telling you about from Kyle Ely at learnyourcnc.com. Again, I've got information on that on that PDF and down in the description below. Again, you've invested in your CNC router. You're invested in the CNC router bits, the tooling, the material. Invest in your knowledge. Get yourself up to speed as fast as you can because it's very rewarding for you to create stuff. And it's very frustrating when we don't read instructions or get the right training and we try to figure it out for ourselves. I promise you will run into problems and you won't know what's going on. I get many, many emails that I can tell people just are getting ahead of themselves because of that. So definitely check out Kyle Ely's course, again, down in the description or on that PDF. You will be grateful that you've done it. And Kyle is very, very helpful. He's one of the masters in the Vectric software. Let's keep going. Now you notice there's a couple ways I've been selecting things. One is by just clicking right on a line. So I'm gonna deselect first of all by clicking off of CNC. So I can click right on anywhere on the letters, anywhere, and everything gets selected. Now click over here again to deselect, or I can create a window that just touches it and that selects everything. So that's pretty cool. These are different ways you can select it. I'm gonna use my up arrows to move the project up and down. Now let's do a couple other things, and this will give you a good foundation of the software. We're gonna draw a line. So we're gonna come over to create vectors, and the second row, we're going to draw a line. I'm going to select that line, and I'm just going to come over until I see this dashed line. I'm going to click, and now we have a line starting at a point. And I'm simply going to come straight across. And you notice the line is jumping onto a horizontal. It will do that, or I can get it to jump on a vertical. I can get it to jump in lots of different areas because the snaps are turned on. But we're going to bring it all the way to the other side and outside that box. I'll click the left mouse button, and I am done drawing a line. So all I have to do now is close this or hit the escape button. And there we are. And what we're going to do is just kind of refine the, the little bit of detail on this. I'm going to give this some shape. Watch this. We're going to have a rounded top. And a rectangular bottom, we're going to get rid of the circle on the bottom and the rectangle on the top. And this is where we'll use the cut feature. Very, very common tool that you will use all the time. Come over to Edit Objects, and there's a little scissors there. Simply click the scissors, and just make sure that little check box is checked right there. I don't need to go into Y, just trust me that that needs to be checked. And now when you come out into the window, there's a little pair of scissors as your cursor. Kind of cute and cool. 
When we hover over lines, you notice that the scissors will open and then they'll close when you're off the line. That's a trim feature. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this kind of weird shape here. Now watch this. So when, this, when it opens up, that means I can cut the circle. And what it'll do, it'll cut the circle from one point that it's touching, which is right down here. It's touching the rectangle right there at the very bottom of the circle and right up here at the side of the circle. So what it's going to do, it's going to cut the circle from those two points. So when I click my left mouse button, oh, look at that. We lost the whole bottom of the circle, which is okay for me. There's a reason for that, but that's because they weren't quite touching right here at the bottom. So it cut it from the point that it crossed this line right here, down, around, and back up to where it crossed this line right here. Now on the top, we're going to get rid of the rectangle. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to cut it from where this line is going across from here, up and around, and all the way down to here and should cut again. So I'm going to hover over the rectangle. When the scissors open, I will click and look, it only cut to there on the top of the circle. And that means that it was touching the top of the circle. So I'm simply going to come over this side of the circle and cut again. And now we have this cool shaped CNC project sign. And then I can cut any other line that I want to. So I'm going to cut the little extra line right there. I click it once. We'll do the same thing over here. Click it again. And then we're going to close the cut function. And now we got this cool little sign. But I don't really need this line in the middle anymore. Now, if I click this line in the center, you notice that this whole thing is highlighted. And what it has done is now created a new closed vector. This rectangle is now a closed vector, and this one is an open vector. I don't want that. I want this part to be there. So what we need to do is cut this line out by using the scissors. This is all just example. So I'm coming over and I'm going to click the scissors, and I'm going to hover in the middle on the line, and I'm going to click it, and now that's done. I'm going to hit the escape button to get out of scissors mode instead of hitting the close button. And now when we click this, the whole thing is considered a closed vector. And now we have a little sign. Well, we have come to the end of the design aspect of this. You now know the very basic tools that you will use all the time in the vector software and how to apply them at a basic level. But we still have a little bit longer to go because I need to show you how to create the tool path to carve out this little project. So what we're going to do over the next 20 minutes is do that. By the time you're done, you will have all this worked out and you will know how to make basic projects. I got to hand it to you. You've stuck around for quite a while. We're hanging around together, kind of like buddies at this point. We got another 20 minutes to go and then we will be done. Again, if you feel like this has helped you at least understand the basics of the Vectric software, a thumbs up and a comment down below would be awesome. And a reminder to get that PDF and to look at the description down below this video. All right, pat yourself on the back for hanging out and pat yourself on the back for learning. You don't have to jump from video to video. You've got Garrett here from IDC Woodcraft to help you out. Okay, let's jump uh, back into the Vectric software, create the tool paths. Let's go. In order to get the tool paths, I showed you earlier that there you have this tool path pullout tab. I always discourage people from using that tab. I would say always go up to this little arrow right here over the drawing area, and it's a little button and it says switch to tool path commands. When you click that, the drawing area will turn off and the tool path area will turn on. So I'm going to click it. And you notice now the drawing area has gone away and the pool path area has now come in. And this is where we are going to actually design our tool path. So we're going to do a couple of things here. Number one, we are going to carve the CNC project as a V carve. If you have cut 2D, you can't do what I'm about to do. This is why I recommend use getting the vcarve pro because you can do much much cooler projects with the pro that you cannot do with cut 2d we're going to do what we call a pocket on the star and then we're going to cut out this side this area right here we're not going to do anything with the stars up here i have to explain to you what the difference is between a pocket a profile and a vcarve so we'll use this jeep sign i made this jeep plaque don't follow me you won't make it 
which is the truth. And the plaque is oriented just like that. So a V-carve does this type of lettering right here. It's not a very clean project. It was something I made when I first got my CNC router. Where you have these V cuts inside the letters, or kind of like this project right here. Or this project I made that's, I love my long mill. And we have this cool lettering that we do all through it. That's a V carve. Pocketing is when you have a profile or a vector, such as a closed vector, and pocketing has to be done with closed vectors. So I had a rectangle here with rounded corners for the windshield of this Jeep, and I told it I wanted to pocket out inside the windshield. So what the tool did is it pocketed out all that material, so now it's dropped down a level. This is a pocket. In other words, this whole area is cut out lower than the surface above it. So that is a pocket. Now a profile cut, the tool actually follows a line. So we have a line that was drawn on the, the design right there. And I just had the router bit follow along that line. Another profile cut is when we're actually cutting out this project here. I told the router bit to follow the line, the profile line of this outline of the Jeep and the shape of the arc there and inside here where the rocks are and the Jeep is. This was all done with a profile. And in the profile, it's gonna leave the plug uncut. It's just gonna cut, cut it out like that. Whereas a pocket would cut out all the material on the inside. So if I did a pocket on this, uh, inside of this profile, then it would have cut all the material out of there. So we'll say this once more time. A V-carve is when you're doing engraved lettering like I love my long mill, which I do. Long mill is an awesome machine. Again, I recommend that if you're looking for a good economical benchtop machine. Very rugged. I have a review video. Of course, I'll link that down below. So that's V-carving. And you use V-carving in lots of different ways, not just on text. You can do it on stars like that. The pocket is when you are cutting out all the material inside of a profile boundary and you can set the depth to whatever you want. So you can pocket, uh, cut all this material out from the windshield. We could cut all this material out here and, and cut all this material out here as a pocket. But when it comes to something this big, we want to do a profile and the profile just simply cuts along the vector line rather than cutting all the material out, which would take a lot of time and is not necessary. We just want to profile the thing. So that's the difference between V-carve, pocketing, and profile cutting. Again, this type of line is a profile cut as well. So the first thing is the CNC project text. We want to do what's called a V-carve. And we will do this with a 90 degree V-bit. In letters like this, we would want to use what we call a bladed V-bit. These are available at the IDC Woodcraft store. It looks just like this. It is an ultra clean cutting tool. It works much better than flat bits, and that will work very, very well on this project here. So what we're going to do is select the CNC project just by creating that window like that. And then we'll come over into the toolpath operations. Just below that are three rows of icons that look like little pieces of wood. We, are, we have this one, this one, and this one. This third one is for 3D project work. If you're brand new, this is too advanced for you. The ones you're going to worry about are this one, which is called the profile toolpath. The second one is pocket toolpath. And the third would be V-carve engraving toolpath. We're going to select the V-carve because that's what you want to make letters on. So when you see the letter V, you know you're going to be carving letters. So we'll come into the V-carve engraving toolpath, select that. And then the first thing we want to do is make sure that the flat depth is not checked. This is something you will learn later with the vector software. Just uncheck that and make sure the start depth line is at zero. This will ensure that the router bit is starting at the top of the project. The next area is the tool that you're going to be using. In this case, we're going to be using a V-bit and it's a 90 degree V-bit. Now, 
If you don't have that bit listed there when you want to use it, you need to come down to this button that says select. And you click this button, the tool database will pop up. And on the tool database, you will have to the left a list of tools. Now the Vectric software comes with some basic tools in it and they're very conservative tools. At idcwoodcraft.com, you can download the entire database that has all the router bits from IDC Woodcraft already populated in here with all the data that's here. As a brand new beginner, you want to get that database because as you see over here, every tool or router bit that you add to your vector software, you have to populate all this data. Now, this is something I can't stress enough. I strongly suggest you just go to idcwoodcraft.com and download the database off the website. The reason is, is because you as a beginner don't realize that when you put router bits into the database, there's a lot of information that you have to put in per router bit. Things like number of flutes, cutting diameter, pass depth, feed rate, plunge rate, number of flutes, I said that, tool numbers. There's a lot of information that you have to put in. And there's a lot of potential for mistake. And at the end of the day, it's just flat out tedious. The database from IDC Woodcraft has all the data for all the bits. And when you install that database, all the information will be there for all the router bits already plugged in for you. Now at IDC Woodcraft, uh, at the website, you can get the database for Vectric, Fusion 360, Carveco, and Carbide Create. If you use ESL, sorry, can't help you there. They don't have databases to be imported. So uh, get that database. Of course, I will link that down below and it will be on that PDF that I keep asking you to download that has all the information for you in one page. And of course, that's down below as well. Now, one of the other things that you will find extremely handy is the IDC Woodcraft phone app. It's the only app out there for router bit settings. So if you have an Apple or an Android, you can get this app, it's free. And when you install that app, it has all the router bit information in the app, the feeds and speeds and all the other data, plus it has all the technical specs for each router bit. And of course, a description for each one. And if you ever need to get another router bit, you don't have to go searching on your computer. You can go into the IDC Woodcraft app and get your router bit directly from there. Of course, I will link that down below and I will put that on the PDF as well. It'll have QR codes for everything and you can just go get the app for free. Some people have said, why do I need an app for my phone? Well, go search for information for speeds and speeds for a bit. It's always a challenge to find it. And everybody offers different feeds and speeds. So the ones that are on the, on the phone, number one, it's extremely convenient because it's right there on your phone. And number two, if you need a bit, you can get it right from the phone. You don't have to search your computer. So we have the database, definitely get that and get the phone app. Everything will be linked down below, of course, and it'll be on the PDF. And the PDF download link is down below as well. So we know we want to use the 90 degree V-bit and we want to use the bladed style. So we're going to use, I know it is, so I know it is this V-bit right here. I'm going to select it. It says 90 degree by a quarter inch. I'm going to select that and then we'll come down and click the select button. And that would populate into this area right here. Down below where it says use clearance tools, you do not want that checked right now. So we're going to uncheck that. That's more advanced stuff as well. And then down at the bottom, if you have a couple of things checked where it says use smart uh, vector start points and use vector selection order, you can leave that checked or unchecked at this point. Where it says name, that's the name of the tool path and you can edit that name. So I'm going to change the name to CNC project text. And that way I'll know what it is. And we simply calculate it. When I click calculate, our whole screen changes. Now we have a piece of wood here and it says CNC project in blue lines and there are some red lines. These are the actual path that the router bit is going to follow when it does its carving. And over to the right, 
at the top it says preview tool pass there are some buttons here which we are going to ignore and then down here is preview the tool paths so we are going to simply click preview all tool paths when i click that you'll watch cnc project get carved in so i'll click preview all tool paths now and now we actually have a carving of cnc project i'm going to close that and we are going to work on the rest of this project so the thing that you want to do now is work with a with a pocket but how are you going to select the vectors that you want we want to select the stars but we can't see them so what we need to do is take a look at both the 2d and the 3d view and the way you do that is by coming up to the series of 12 icons and coming all the way over to the right when you hover over it it says arrange views vertically so that means we are now going to see two windows and when i click that now we're looking at both of them and what we're going to do now is we are going to carve a pocket in this star here. So we're going to come over to Toolpath Operations to the second icon. It says Pocket Toolpath. And you notice it's a little box with a recess in it. That means that it's carving out the inside, inside some lines. For example, inside the star. So everything inside the star is going to be cut down a little bit to a lower depth. Select that. And when you get that, of course, first you want to make sure your start depth is zero and your cut depth is the proper depth. Now, cut depth is how deep the project is going to cut. Now, remember, our project is three quarters of an inch deep. That's the depth of the material, but it says one inch here. We only want to go one eighth, so we'll type in 0.125. You put this in in decimals. Down below, you need to select the router bit. Now you notice a big white box here where it says tools. And we just want to make sure that there's one bit in here. If you have multiple listings in here, simply click one and click remove and keep removing until nothing is in here. Then you'll hit select again. It'll open up the tool database and you notice it looks a little bit different. And that's because before it was only allowing us to select the V bits. Now we have all the router bits that are listed in the IDC Woodcraft database. And I just want to show you real quick. I'm going to expand that out and grab that slider bar and move up and down. I want you to look how many tools are there. All this will get populated when you download that database. Otherwise, you got to populate all this information yourself and just think how, as a beginner, not understanding what this data is supposed to be, this could be tedious for you. So we want to make sure that you have the right data. Be sure to go to idcwoodcraft.com right here at the top in the menu bar it says database downloads select that and then you select the vectric if you have another software select that and you will be fine so now we're going to select the let's see we'll, we'll select the down cut end mills and we're going to go with the 1 8 down cut so simply select that and you notice now everything is populated and hit the select button and now up in the tools area, your router bit is populated for that carve. The rest of the stuff down here, we're not going to worry about. You'll learn this a little bit later. Everything else we're going to leave alone. And we'll simply come down to the bottom and give it a name. And we'll call this star. And then calculate. And you may get this every once in a while. The tool path produced an empty tool path or something was not selected. It created an empty tool path because I didn't, I, it could not carve. You notice that CNC project is selected. I forgot to select the star. We do this all the time. So right now the one eighth cannot fit in between the lettering. So that's why it's saying it can't do that. So simply click OK. And we have to go back into that tool path. So you notice down at the bottom, lower right, it says tool paths, and we have the CNC project text done, and then it says star. If you have to go back into a tool path, simply double click that particular one. So we are going to double click star. And now that has opened that tool path back up, 
go over to your 2D design and simply click on the vectors that you want to carve. So we're clicking the star, you notice that's now highlighted and CNC project is not highlighted. And we'll come back down and recalculate. So you can either cancel or calculate. Calculate figures out how the router bit is going to run around inside that star. Click calculate and now you see we have a star. And we have our tool path lines. So red indicates the rapid movement from the lower left corner. That's where the router bit is starting. You remember we picked the lower left corner as our start point. Now all we have to do now is come back in and preview all tool paths under the preview tool paths button. You select that and there is our star. Very, very cool. We have now created two tool paths. CNC project and the star. And you'll notice the star does not have sharp corners here like it does over here in the 2D project. And that's because we have a 1 8 radius tool and it simply can't get up into that corner. And so that's what it's going to look like. You can use a smaller CNC router bit. In the IDC Woodcraft starter set, you will have a quarter inch, eighth inch, and a sixteenth inch. Plus you'll have three different V-bits, the bladed style ultra clean cut in V-bits, so you can do your text like this. We have one more thing to do, and then you and I are going to part ways after about an hour and a half. First of all, congratulations for hanging out this long. I know that you are now at a level of understanding the Vectric software at the basic level. Before we get into this final thing that we're going to do, which is cut out the project on a profile tool path, again, I want to re just to remind you that you may want to consider this vector course from Kyle Ely at learnyourcnc.com. You have seen a lot of stuff, but you've also seen me skip over a lot of stuff. All these things are things that you will need to know as you progress. And Kyle's course will teach you and it'll help you understand the flow of the software. And of course, when things happen that you don't understand why, you will have an understanding. And you'll have a lot better understanding than most people who use the software because they don't do what you do and go get the proper instruction. So down, of course, in the description is going to be a link to that for you to at least go take a look. All right, let's get into this final thing where we're going to actually cut out the project and have a little simple sign with a star CNC project and that basic shape of that project. And you, my friend, have gone an entirely new level in this last hour and a half. Kind of feel like I'm your friend at this point. All right, let's get back to the software and get done with this. Finally, what we want to do is do our final cut, which is to cut out the project. So this is the last cut tool path that you're going to create so you understand how the basic tool path features work. We have to come over to the preview tool paths and then simply close that. And now we're going to select the line around our sign. So I'll click that. And you notice the star deselected and the project around it has selected. And now we're going to do a profile cut. A profile cut actually cuts around a line. So it won't pocket. It'll follow a line. Over the toolpath operations, you select the first icon. That's called a profile toolpath. Select that and we open up 2D Profile Toolpath. Now we want our start depth to be zero again because we want the router bit to start at the top of the project. The cut depth, we want it to cut all the way through the project. Now you see it says one inch. We want to go only three quarters of an inch. So you can type in three quarters here or 0.75. And you may see this checked or unchecked. If it's unchecked, then there will be more there will be less menu items here, but we want to uncheck this for right now. So if it says show advanced toolpath options and it's checked, we're going to simply uncheck that for right now. And then down below, we will stay on the line. And what that means is the router bit will cut on the line here. And we will simply come down and give it a name. We're going to call this cutout and calculate. And now we have another toolpath in the shape of that profile. And then all you'll do is simply click preview all toolpaths again, and then come over to the outside material and simply double click on it and it'll go away. 
And there we have it. Now you have created a project, very simple, very basic. So now we're gonna close preview tool paths and we are gonna save the project because we haven't saved this in a while. So there are two ways to save this. Number one is you can come all the way up in the upper left to file, click file, come down and click the save word and that will save this project and all the data associated with this project, meaning the router bits, the tool paths, and what have you. The other way to save is go back to the drawing side, and you do that by clicking this upper arrow here, and this will turn off the tool path function and turn on the drawing function, so I'll select that. The tool path is now gone, drawing is, is now active again, and right up at the top you have the little save button right there, you can click that and that will save your project. Well, I'm about ready for a beer. We are done together. Congratulations for hanging out. You have learned a ton of stuff. Ton of information down below in the description. Get that PDF. I hope you have a great day, better tomorrow, and happy CNCing. IDCwoodcraft.com.